and this beautiful, beautiful September morning. Uh, we have a, a special uh, guest preacher with us today, the Reverend Tim Bobbs, will be with us, uh, a longtime member here at the church, and uh, we'll get him one last time before head off to France for the fall. So, um, without further ado, let's begin our service. Blessed be the one, holy and living God. Glory to God. Almighty God, you are all our suffering, all and from you. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. That we may ever be loved and worship. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God in the world. Lord God, Almighty God, we worship, we give you thanks, we praise you. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son. Lord God, now you take away sin and mercy. We are seeing. We see now our head. You will love my words. You will love my words. Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed upon things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and hear God's words from the scripture. A reading from the wisdom of Solomon. But the ungodly by their words and deeds summon death. Considering him a friend, they pined away and made a covenant with him because they are fit to belong in his company. For they reasoned unsoundly, saying to themselves, short and sorrowful is our life and there is no remedy when a life comes to its end and no one has been known to return from Hades. Let us lie in wait for the righteous man because he is inconvenient to us and opposes our actions. He reproaches us for sins against the law and accuses us of sins against our training. He professes to have knowledge of God and calls himself a child of the Lord. He came to us a reproof of our thoughts. The very sight of him is a burden to us because his manner of life is unlike that of others and his ways are strange. We are considered by him as something base and he avoids our ways as unclean. He calls the last end of the righteous happy and boasts that God is his father. Let us see if his words are true and let us test what will happen at the end of his life. For if the righteous man is God's child, he will help him and will deliver him from the hand of his adversaries. Let us test him with insult and torture so that we may find out how gentle he is and make trial of his forbearance. Let us condemn him to a shameful death for according to what he says, he will be protected. Thus they reasoned, but they, did, but they were led astray for their wickedness blinded them. And they did not know the secret purposes of God, nor hoped for the wages of holiness, nor discern the prize for blameless souls. The word of the Lord. Psalm 54. Save me, O God, by your name and your might, defend my cause. For the arrogant have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life, those who have no regard for God.
Render, render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. For you have rescued me from every trouble, and my eyes have seen the ruin of my foes. A reading from a letter of James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and you do not have it. So you commit murder and you covet something and cannot obtain it. So you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Jesus and his disciples went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down and called the twelve and said to them, Whoever wants to be the first must be last of all and servant of all. He took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me, Welcomes not me, but the one who sent him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Somehow may God's word be spoken, and somehow may God's word be heard. Amen. Well, thank you for that warm welcome, and it's a delight. It is a delight to be here. It's a particular delight to participate in this celebration of the season of creation that the church across the world is, is doing, where we, we step into a time where we imagine our place in creation and we wonder at the mystery of it, the love with which it's given and where we might go in our time. Love wants two things, an object and a response. Creation is the object of God's love. Hence, the love of God is understood as vast and intricate and intimate. And all it wants is a response to be fulfilled. A free response from someone who has the freedom to love. 
someone like us. Our response to God is to say, with our freedom and our obedience, yes, I love you too. The high camp on Mount McKinley is a glaciated windswept ledge. 17,000 feet up the side of the mountain, the natives and now all of us properly call Denali, the high one. High camp is a modest ledge on such a huge mountain, just about the size of our St. Francis churchyard. Climbers reach there only after weeks of grueling effort and when they do, they make camp in their high altitude tents and they take a good needed rest day before making their summit attempt. I call it a rest day, but it's really not. Even experienced climbers are jumpy with anticipation of summit day. And in this unique setting, the handful of human beings present come intensely in touch with the basic elements of creation, light and wind, air, rock, ice, shivering in the cold, thin air, but mostly shivering with the expectation of the challenge and some danger and some great joy of reaching the top of Alaska, the top of the continent, the top of some personal lists of dreams, perhaps. Shivering with such expectation, little resting goes on, but a humble awareness building exercise takes place in every heart. On summit day, they hope and pray to make a 3,000 foot climb to the top and then back to the relative safety of this camp, all in 18 grueling hours. After weeks of climbing, you might suspect that summit day would really be just more of the same. One crampon boot step after another, one desperately needed rest break after another, one swing of an ice axe following another, the slow, breathless progress up, followed by just more up. But it's not. It's not just more of the same. Such an expedition into creation is always new territory. New territory to be leaned into, embraced, and anticipated palpably anticipated palpably in the climber's head and heart and churning gut. Oh, the anxieties and the aches are real, but after all that preparation, one turns away from them. And the experience is one entirely of being a small piece of a vast and good creation, looking forward, getting ready for a dance like none you've ever danced. I found myself there exactly some 20 some years ago this summer after my own days of arduous climbing and of my summit morning, I don't remember any of the pain or the breathlessness or the fear, but I do remember learning to become in a very new way, a lot an alive piece of a vast and good creation and looking forward with rich anticipation of an experience like I'd never imagined. Our team didn't need to be encourage each other to get up that day. We were alert and ready and we did what mountain climbers do on summit days. We stood and raised our heads to look up at that peak because all we anticipated was drawing near. We leaned our chins back and gazed into the cold sky still lighted in the early hours of the day by stars and the sliver of a moon and the hint of the never quite setting Arctic sun, revealing the swirling wisp of high clouds. We stood up and we raised our heads because all was drawing near and we rose and moved as though we were up to the challenge, confident and humbled in equal measure, always moving forward. Jesus speaks of a coming of God so near 
that like a great mountain climb, the experience will startle us, scare us perhaps, and leave us breathless and deeply unsettled, deeply satisfied as well, an experience that will change things as we know them. And about this, he says to stay alert, prepare with prayer and care. He says, even in the midst of the entire world's overtones of trouble and grief, try to live as though you already know that God is in your midst. What a thing to ask. Remember when he says, look at the fig tree and all the trees, as soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourself and know that summer is already near. How do we do that? How do we anticipate this notion that God and we are in the same realm, that we're invited to know each other and touch each other, to live as though we already know that God is in your midst and that you and I are small, generative part of a vast and good creation. Love wants two things, an object and a response. And all this love of God wants is a response to be fulfilled, a free response of someone who has the freedom to love, someone like us. As you know, we live in a time of crisis in the climate and in our civil discourse. Sometimes I turn to my heroes in moments of such confusion. Desmond Tutu, a man of profound preparation and prayer, was the leader of a, his own world in the midst of deadly tumult, trouble, and grief. And during the darkest days of apartheid and against all objective fact, he simply acted as if the victory had already come, if he was already in God's realm. He said, my confidence is not in the present circumstances, but in the realm of God's creation, already promised and underway. I am part of it. Well, we're not Desmond. But we can rise and move and even dance as he did. If that which we hope for is a deep relationship with God and God's creation. And if we act as though it is already promised and underway, as he said, this requires a bit of presumption, doesn't it? This accepting our role as living pieces of a vast and good creation. Yet it's a role we have been given so if in our troubles, if peace is what is missing in your life, take a deep breath and lie your head on God's quieting breast for just a moment. It's right there. If health is poor and pain is a familiar companion, turn away from it for a few moments and bathe in the warm water of God's love and care. If grief is your burden, then take a moment to talk with those you miss. Yet talk from a higher plane. Take a healing posture at the altitude given us by God's love. You might say, this is just pretending. This is just make-believe. But no, it's not pretending. It's anticipating already what is coming. Pretending is doing something that will never happen like I did with those $4 I spent on the Powerball ticket last month. <laughs> Anticipation is doing something that may surely happen indeed. As a priest, a young bride once told me that she tried on her wedding dress 12 times the day before her wedding. To dance this dance of anticipation, this dance of anticipating into our God-given roles in creation, is to breathlessly anticipate with the electric palpable reality of stepping nearer to God, if only to wonder at the mystery. It is to trade ambiguity and contentiousness of the headlines for clarity, worry for joy, stress for rest, 
It is to lay down a burden and to be held like a child, to be known and to be loved. To stand with your feet firmly planted in reality, yes, but to lean into God's generative future. To stand up and raise your heads because you see creation isn't finished yet. And your hands and heads are needed. You can count on it. This is bedrock, this nearness of God. Jesus said, even heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. His word of connectivity and power and grace. All that grips us and sends us off on our foolish ways, all that will pass away. All fear will pass away. Pain, frustration, confusion, contentiousness, and error that we know so well are parts of the story now. But they're not the end of the story. Lean into that future, and if these are the worst of times, do the best of things. If these days are calamitous, then let your choices be animated by hope. And don't worry about being odd while you do this dance. Nobody looks natural when they dance. I certainly don't. But dancing is the most natural thing in the world. And no one looks more odd than climbing a 20,000 foot mountain, but nothing is more natural than taking our place in God's creation. This is not wishful. This meaning making is something that has a long record in our Christian story. Our faith knows that when we live our lives as if God's hopes for us, as if the hopes of heaven were already here, even when they do not seem to be, something happens. When we live our lives, our best lives, like people fulfilled, even when we do not feel it completely, something of wonder happens. When we live our lives as if the gaps were closed by God's grace, balm, bounty, and beauty, even when we experience otherwise, something happens. It's not only a miracle. Reality is changed. Reality is visited by God's future, a great creation indeed. That which we had hoped for, that which God has hoped for with us, begins to show up in our lives. That for which we prepare and anticipate, that for which we lean our heads back to experience and sense and let swirl around us in the night sky, begins to show up in our lives. Lives leaned into step by ever renewing step. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away. But my word, my love, my empowering grace will not pass away. My prayer is that this season and the next season and the next, we can accept together the mystery of creation and know the wonder of peace and clarity from, that comes from trusting that we are part of a vast and good creation, that we can equip our lives with the confidence of the ever new, the ever healing, the ever generative presence of God in our midst, and make our good response to that good love as best we possibly can. Like those mountain climbers on a summit day, the experience is entirely one of looking forward, getting ready for a dance like none we've never danced. I'm certainly not the first mountaineer or the last preacher to see great hope in our small roles in the vast and good creation of our God. Another of my heroes, the American naturalist John Muir wrote in his journal these words. It's another glorious Sierra day in which one seems to be dissolved and absorbed and set pulsing onward we know not where. Life seems neither short nor long. We take no more heed to save time or make haste than do the trees and the stars. We are at peace. This is true freedom, a good practical source of immortality for you see, the sun shines not on us, but in us. The river flows not past, but through us. Thrilling, tingling, vibrating, every fiber and cell 
of the substance of our bodies, making them glide and sing. The trees wave and the flowers bloom in our bodies, as well as our souls, and every bird song, wind song, tremendous storm song of the rocks in the heart of the mountains is our song, our very own, and sings of our love and of God's. May it be so. Amen. Amen. Now let us complete our faith in the words of the nice new priest found on page five in our service. We believe in one God, Father, Maker of heaven, of all that is in us. We believe in Christ, the only Son, eternally begotten of God, God from God. Light from life, true God, we are not of one being with God, through him all. For us and for us, he came down by the power of the Spirit, he became incarnate and was made for our sake. He suffered death on the third day in accordance with scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. He will come and he will see him. He will be in the spirit, the Lord of you, who proceeds from Father and Son. With the Father and Son, He has spoken to the cross. You believe in the We acknowledge our actions for His sins. We look at the and the The prayers of the people. We look to you, O oh God, to teach us how to be whom you created us to be. Shine your light on the path ahead. Catch us when we take a wrong turn, and by your spirit, move us in the right direction. We are your children. We yearn for peace, but are constantly at war with ourselves our neighbors, and the nations throughout the world. We are your children. We, your church, are easily distracted by things that don't matter. Turn our eyes to you. Open our hearts to you. Deepen our love of you. Bless our bishops, priests, and deacons. May we teach each other how to walk in love. We are your children. Yes. Our bodies ache, our spirits are restless, and our minds grow weary with constant worry. Lead us to a place of wholeness and make each of us agents of healing in this world. We pray for those who have asked our prayers today, especially Amelia, Andrea, Art, Arthur, Mary Boyd, Harry and Marie Bissell, Ever Dufresne, Giffy Full, Roger Grindle, Grace High, Bethany Hill, Jack Hooper, Jill, Justin, Jenny, Kayla, Kira, and John Klinger, Keegan, Joanne Creston, Fred Marston, Sophia Partridge, Ronan, Diana Robson, Dennis Robertson, Carla Rosenzweig, Mary Semler, Linda Slavin, Kathy Smith, Peggy Smith, Marshall Smith, Terry Stephen Smith, Donnie Smith, Fred Stein, Marilyn Stewart, Carl and Carolyn Taylor, Judy Thomas, Holly Whalen, Cecile Wiley, and Persis Williams. We are your children. 
When a dear one dies, we ask that you receive them into your eternal kingdom as promised. We pray today for the repose of the soul of the recently departed. Assure those who grieve that you will not leave them desolate in their sorrow, but hold their loved one close to your heart. We are your children. Pray for those who are celebrating birthdays this week, especially Emma Brown, Joanne Creston, Sally Falk, Ann Cassatt, Richard Duffield, and Lynn Urasco. We are your children. Pray for those who serve in the armed services, especially Abigail, Kyle Karingo Mings, James Crow III, Andy Dittmer, Brian Haley, Sean Haley, Kyler Hall, Douglas Hamilton, Peter McGuire, Eric Partridge, Kevin West. We are your children. You are invited to add any additional intercessions at this time, either silently or aloud. We are your children. Lord God, your son made himself the least among us, bore our sins upon the cross, and delivered us from death by his own suffering and dying. Forgive us our sins by which we have added to the world's pain, and make us instruments of peace and reconciliation to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God, all of us, we confess that we have sinned against you and all of you are in our lives. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice unto God.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Please rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, You sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By By his blood, he has reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. 
the Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Hagar, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. This is God's table. All are welcome here. By Christ. Our post communion prayer is found on page nine in our service booklet. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Jesus our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We have a couple of announcements today. Hope you all have, have good plans today. That there, I think there's good breeze for sailing, so, so I hope you have, have good things to do today. Uh, hope you are well. Um, a couple of announcements. Um, the Outreach Committee is seeking new members what the Outreach Committee does is it, it works with all the funds that we gather and, uh, and budget for that get distributed out into the community. Um, I think our biggest project right now is the Magic Food Bus. I think we, uh, we give uh, one of the biggest donations, I think, to that organization and have since they began. Um, uh, but there's other things that we do with, with Emmaus and with Home and a whole bunch of other Thanksgiving baskets, all of that. If you're interested in getting involved in a very exciting ministry, a critical ministry, and one that will take bigger and bigger importance um, here at, in the life of St. Francis, please get in touch with Sue Grindle. She's not able to be here today, but, but Sarah is one of the key members of that committee. If you want to talk to her, ask her about it after church, um, that's great. Uh, but, but it's an important work that we're doing here in the community. 
Uh, related to that, the Simmering Pot, there's a, I won't go into the details, but it's a rather detailed announcement, but the Simmering Pot, which provides soup to those in need of soup um, on a weekly basis, it needs backup volunteers people who can get called in a pinch to come in. Um, so, so if you have any interest in that, please uh, get in touch with, um, with Maria at the email or phone number here. Our um, Wednesday Seekers continues uh, with the showings of Julian of Norwich. Uh, we are reading chapters 16 through 30. Uh, it's been excellent so far. Anyone can join at any time. And even if you don't have the book, don't worry about it. Uh, and any, any version of it will do, uh, but it's been a really great conversation. So the last thing I want to talk about are, are, are these windows. We've got great windows in this church. Uh, very, I, we had no idea how useful these windows are going to be. Um, and it's mid-September in Maine, and it's getting colder and breezier, apparently. Um, so um, I, I hope you saw in the email yesterday, uh, but the vestry and I have been talking about this, like, what are we going to do? Um, the, the overall national trend is, is, looks like it might be peaking, um, but Maine, Maine is not. Maine is still on a very steep curve going up. Uh, we had two deaths in Hancock County this past week. Um, so uh, we need to keep COVID, especially the Delta variant, very high in our minds and high priority. So what we have decided to do, and I know this is not going to make everyone happy, uh, particularly, you know, I'm, I've got blankets, you know, uh, is uh, we're going to keep the windows open for as long as we need to. Uh, and we don't know how yet to determine when COVID is coming down, but it's not now. Uh, we keep it open. And so um, please dress appropriately. Um, bring a lap blanket. If you have one of those big buffalo ones, you know, bring that, you know, fine. Or bring hot bricks like we used to in the old colonial days, whatever it takes. Um, and if it is too cold, which, which it certainly, I mean, it's getting there. Um, it, even midsummer, we had some mornings where it was chilly at the eight o'clock service. Um, if you do find that it's too cold for you, that is your cue that Zoom is, um, is the place to worship. Uh, what I don't want to do is cancel worship for everyone, if some people are willing to shiver. Um, so uh, Bob and I will be here until the screens freeze up. Um, and, then, and then we'll close the windows and, and continue in a Zoom only, if it comes to that. Uh, God willing, it won't, either the screen or Bob freezing, or uh, that we're, we're come mid-December and still having to be dealing with this. Uh, but that, that is the best that the Vestry and I have come up with. Um, if you have a better idea, we are happy to take it, because that's not a particularly good solution but that's the solution we have. What I'm really glad about is we have the option to be cold um, as opposed to having just to go to Zoom, which other churches are dealing with at this point. So if you do have other ideas, please share them with us. Um, but otherwise that, that is the current plan and um, it is what it is. So um, thank you so much for, as I said in the email, thank you for your patience and your fortitude. Uh, this is hard. And as, as Melissa's wonderful message out to us reminds us, it's a very stressful time. It's a very stressful time because we keep thinking that we're almost there and this is going on for a long time, longer than anyone had hoped um, and preventably, which makes it even more frustrating and stressful. So uh, thank you for keeping up with what we're doing here and in your own lives because uh, we do have a ways to go. Thank you. Anything else for the good of the Melissa, do you have anything? Just that um, the vestry has chosen a fall cleanup date uh, a little later this year. We are going to meet on October 30th. So, um, we might, we might, we'll probably be fun. And then, so we're planning that in order to scale this time. You can wear costumes to rake. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and what we probably will do. Um, somehow tied into that is that we will do, there's a, there's a little known and rarely performed service in the book of occasional services uh, called, it's uh, for All Hallows Eve. And it says it's, it's best get done in a graveyard, which is kind of fun. And we read the, the Witch of Endor and some of the other creepier readings um, from, the, from scripture. Uh, but we will do that as the eve of All Hallows Eve. So a little, a little uh, liturgical curiosity on top of uh, the good work. So, so stay tuned for that uh, for the, the 30th of October. It's a Saturday. Thanks, Melissa. Oh, and thank you to Tim. Uh, love needs an object and a response. That's, that's good. Thank you very much for your words today, Tim. You're very welcome. Thank you.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody was beautiful.